It's mailbag time here on the Raiders Report. And today's mailbag, you know what I'm talking about, is presented by Manscaped. Head on over to manscaped.com. Use code Raiders. So whether you're cleaning your black hole or if you want to make sure your manhood or your mailbag is looking great, 20% off and free shipping, manscaped.com. Just use code Raiders. Now, Valentine's Day, I know a lot of people, you might have missed it. And for that reason, I'm sorry. But if you still didn't get anything special for Valentine's Day, Tell your girl, send her that link, manscaped.com, use code Raiders. What up, Max? Five francs for good entertainment. There is nothing better than stand up and watching the game at 2 a.m. to see your show. Greetings from Switzerland. Well, Max, I appreciate that. I was going to say, you said five francs for good entertainment. I didn't know how much five francs were. Honestly, five francs for good entertainment sounds like something that, I don't know, maybe producer Sam would enjoy. Let's go to Ardo. He just gave me a look like... Come on, man. All right, what do you think is the plan at cornerback? Resign Hayward or look in free agency for a splash or draft a corner? I do not see the Raiders bringing back Casey Hayward. Why? He was a fit for the Gus Bradley system. I actually think Hayward goes to the Indianapolis Colts, if I'm being 100% honest with you all. So, no, I do not see that happening. At corner, the top two names to keep in mind, J.C. Jackson because of his connection with New England. Also throw out the name Stephon Gilmore. Why? Remember, the Raiders, the defensive backs coach that they brought in from uh, – What's from Carolina has the connection with Gilmore from this past season, but Gilmore also played side by side with Jackson in New England. So I think those are the top two corners you can look at in free agency. And then in the draft, depends who falls to 22. I like Andrew Booth. I like Sauce Gardner. I like Trent McDuffie as well. So those would be the three corners that I would target at 22. Let's go to Untouchable Raid, or er, 1960. I would let DC play on his last year deal. Get a cheap receiver like DJ Chark and get a receiver in the draft. Morrow, Perriman, and Diablo are my starters for next season at linebacker. So you got to re-sign Morrow and you have Perriman and Diablo. Okay, you still need to go out and find another linebacker who's going to be running the 3-4. Maybe you throw Malcolm Kuntz out there and let him edge rush. I like DJ Chark. Yeah, I would let DC play on his last year deal as well. The issue is this. DC doesn't want to play on his last year. So, again, I know everyone thinks that, oh, DC can't ever do anything wrong. But if Derek wanted to do what was best for the Raiders organization and best for the team, he wouldn't ask for a contract extension. But he's going to be selfish, which is okay. He deserves it. He's dealt with a lot of bull crap, and I would want my money too. But I would not want to pay him $40 million a year, which, buckle up. Let's go to Vic, 13-5-0-1. Since Ngakwe is a Bradley guy, what do you think about the Colts trading him for a first-round pick? All right, so Gus Bradley, the Raiders' D.C., he just got hired by the Indianapolis Colts as their D.C. because their old defensive coach, he left. He's now the head coach of the Bears. Here's the issue. The Indianapolis Colts, they don't have a first-round pick this year, so their next closest pick would be 47. So let's do this. Um, if we're going to make a trade like this, Unique Gakwe – to Indianapolis for the Colts' second-round pick, and then the Colts' is, uh, what's his name, Gl Gl Glowinski. He's the right guard. So we'll take we'll take the right guard, 47th overall pick, and then the Raiders, they trade away Gakwe. So, Sam, if you could make that up for me. While Sam's making that up, because I want to show you what that looks like as a graphic, if you haven't subscribed to the Raiders Report yet, please go ahead and do so. We keep you up to date. Everything going on around the silver and black. So if there is a big time trade that ends up going down, you're going to be seeing a video about it. So hit the sub button. Turn on those noties. We got you covered. News, rumors. If you want free Raiders videos, we are the YouTube channel for you. There's a reason why we have over 100,000 subs. There's a reason why we've dropped a video on this channel for every single day for over two years. We're dedicated to the craft. So here's that trade that I just thought of here based off of your idea so the Colts, they get Unique Gakwe. The Raiders get Mark Glowinski, who's the right guard, starting right guard, and then a second-round pick. This would be the deal that I would ask for if they wanted Unique Gakwe, if, since they don't have a first-round pick. Glowinski is a hell of a right guard. I'd be like, oh, wait, what do you do with Le Alex Leatherwood? You just kick Alex Leatherwood over to the left, start, left guard spot. He played a little bit of left guard at Alabama as well. Let's go to Tito. I think Zay Jones is a free agent. Do you think we should re-sign him? I do think Zay Jones is a free agent. The only way I would bring him back is if he takes the deal under $3 million. Let's go to Juicehead89. What's up, Mitch? What do you think about converting Abram to linebacker and draft a safety in the later rounds? I mean, you have to convert 
Abram to a linebacker. He can't play safety. He's not good enough to cover. The Raiders' defense was better when Abram got hurt, and I hate to say it, but it's true. If you can move on from Abram, that's personally what I would do. The issue is nobody and their mother is going to ever want to pay Abram the kind of money that he is. So, again, another first-round bust. Now, maybe he would be able to fit in a 3-4 style of defense because he can go sideline to sideline. Abram's problem is, though, he has yet to be able to show me that he has been able to mature as a football player and has been able to mature on the field. I just don't have a lot of confidence in Jonathan Abram. I'm sorry, I don't. So if you guys want a shout-out here on the Raiders Report, I want you to go ahead and type balls in the comments right now. Why? Because if you use Manscaped products, their slogan is, your balls will thank you. And on top of that, their new logo is literally a ball sack with angel wings and a halo. I mean, this is the type of company that I love. Look at the amount of balls we got coming in right now. Love it. Love balls come on my screen. I know it sounds weird, but I can say that kind of stuff. Why? Because Manscaped is today's sponsor. And if you guys want to get your hands on the Ultra Premium Collection, which is only $39.99 with promo code RAIDERS, we got you covered here. So the reason why I love the Ultra Premium Collection, it takes care of you from your head to your toe. So let's say you wake up in the morning, you hop into the shower, you start scrubbing yourself on down with their body wash, you're going to be good. And then you start you know, getting all the grunk out of your hair because you use hair product like me with their shampoo. Then you're ready to rock and roll. You step out of the shower, you start spraying yourself with the Axe Body or the, the body wash. Then you use your lip balm. Make sure your lips are nice and smooth. And you can also go ahead and use the deodorant as well. So as soon as you get in the shower, as soon as you get out of the shower, Manscaped, they got you covered. So go ahead, go to manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. And now they got these brand new products. I promise y'all, you're going to absolutely love them. The link's going to be available for you in the comments and down in the description. Let's go to VR7 2006. Would Deshaun Watson be a great pickup for the Raiders? Well, you're not just going to be able to pick him up. You're going to have to go out and trade for him. And I'm not going to trade for Deshaun Watson until his legal case is settled. So his legal uh, case is going to be happening on February 22nd, which is right around the corner. If he's clean, he's free, man, it's all good to go. Deshaun Watson would be a very interesting person to go out and get. Better quarterback than Derek Carr. You would have to pay him, but I'd be, I would pay Deshaun Watson $40 million a year before I pay Derek Carr $35 million a year and it Again, not, not really close to me. Let's go to Jack Hossel. All this talk about signing Adams for big money, but shouldn't be locking up the O-line first. Yes, the Raiders should absolutely go out and get an offensive lineman. Here's the issue. If Derek Carr is saying, hey, I want to be the quarterback, and I want you guys to extend me, but I also want you to go out and get Devontae Adams, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh McDaniels and those guys try to do it. Now, going out and getting an offensive line is definitely important, but in terms of who's out there, you have a few really solid guards, like Brandon Scherf's the top right guard out there. The top right tackle, I'd probably say, is Morgan Moses, and he's uh, above average, but he's not like, oh my gosh, he's absolutely insane. The reason why Adams gets brought up is because of the connection with the car and because he's the top free agent out there. Let's go to Jeremy Gomez. Since Jalen Richard is a free agent, thoughts on signing James White? I mean, if you could tell me either Jalen Rashard at 3.5 mil or James White at 3.5 mil, I'll take James White, and it's really not that close to me. Why? Better fit in the Josh McDaniel system. There are a lot of injuries to Kenyon Drake that I would be concerned about. Josh McDaniel, or uh, Josh McDaniel. Josh Jacobs has some injury issues as well. But for White, he only played three games last season. 10 carries for 38 yards. Also 12 catches in those three games. We know he's a pass-catching back, knows the system. I would be at least a little bit interested to at least see how much he'd be willing to take in terms of an overall, excuse me, overall value. Sorry, I had to burp. My balls are in my throat. So who's the better running back, Jalen Rashard, type R, or James White, type W? Let me know what y'all are thinking. I know everyone's dedicated to the team, and I get it. Talking about Patriots players kind of drives me nuts too, but this show isn't about trying to be loyal to players. It's about being loyal to the shield, and that's what this show is about. The type R for Rashard. W for white. What up, Alex Thompson? Got my Waller jersey last week. Thanks for the hookup. You're welcome. If Uga, uh, Uga, if Jordan Davis falls 22, we have to take him. He's a beast. If Jordan Davis, the defensive tackle from Georgia, falls to 22, he will be the number one player that I think the Raiders should go out and get. The Raiders have five defensive tackles that are going to be free agents, and in a 3-4 scheme, he's the absolute perfect fit. Let's go to LC Raider. Could you grade Merrick's season? If you were to, on a scale from 1 to 100, I'd probably give him like a 76. I thought as a rookie, he was able to do a lot of things really well. Coverage could get a little bit better, but he's a hell of a tackler. 
you're asked a lot of responsibility in a Gus Bradley system, especially if you're going to play that single high safety as your center fielder. I'll give him a 76 grade, C overall. He had an average, a little bit of above average season, but uh, I absolutely love what I see out of Merrick. He's going to be a hell of a player. Let's go to Daniel Brown. What's good, Mitch? What do you think about the Raiders trading for Brandon Cooks? So two things. One, Brandon Cooks is spelled with an I, not an O. And Cooks was my second rated uh, wide receiver that I think the Raiders should go out and get. Cooks has a lot of experience in the McDaniel system, in the Patriot system, if you guys remember. Brandon Cooks actually played on the Patriots a few uh, years ago. Now, he's been traded like three times. This would be his fourth time getting traded. The other reason why I like it is because you'd have to pay him $12.5 million. And for a player of Cooks' caliber, 12.5 is reasonable. The only thing that scares me about Brandon Cooks is he has had a lot of concussion issues, which the past two years he hasn't. I know a lot of dudes have forgotten about that, but I, I love Brandon Cooks. He'd be a hell of a player. Let's go to Robert. If Carr wants only to be a Raider and win a Super Bowl, he needs a three-year extension at $28, $30 million. I agree. Do not disagree. Here's the thing. One of the reasons why I said I thought the whole thing was a bluff that Derek said I only want to play for the Raiders, I'd rather be traded, was because... It's not true. Derek wants $35 to $40 million a year. So there you go. So what's the better birthday cake, y'all? Type C for chocolate. Type V for vanilla. The reason why I'm asking is because my birthday is on Sunday. And if you want to try to guess how old I am, sure, shoot your shot. I don't mind. Now, growing up, it was always chocolate. And actually, the cake that I used to get when I was a kid was chocolate with peanut butter icing. Now, I like different types of variety, but if you had to get a birthday cake, and I know there's so many other flavors you can go out there now, are you the guy that gets the chocolate, type C, or type V for vanilla? If you haven't already, hit me up on Instagram. Please go ahead and do so at MitchellRent365. I know I can't get to all y'all's questions. Hell, we got over 1,000 people watching this live show right now. But to stay up to date on news, rumors, I got you covered. And if you want to see yourself on a future show like Aaron Giliani, uh, good... Roe Gregory and Raider Dave 28 hit me up on IG at Mitchell Rance 365 if you want to see pictures of Chuck if you want to see pictures of my girlfriend Alex and I if you just want to see what I do on a daily basis best way to do it and again I also have been posting a lot more Raiders news and rumors on my IG story what up Philip <clears throat> if our new head coach likes DC enough to extend him do you see him doing whatever it takes to get Adams potentially obviously though the issue is this if I'm the Green Bay Packers I franchise tag Devontae Adams. Then if you franchise tag him, then you got to give up probably two first-round picks for Adams. For that reason, I'm not going to give up two first-round picks for Devontae Adams. I love Adams. He's a hell of a player, but it's just too much, and then you have to go out and pay him. All right, got a super chat coming from Tyler Fireblade. Is there a world where the Raiders sign both Chark and Robinson? Yeah, sure. I mean, DJ's not going to cost all that much. He had a, what, seven catches, 172 yards, uh, two touchdowns this past season, but he hurt his knee. I think he could take a one-year type of prove-it deal, and if he's willing to take like five, six million dollars, go out and get Allen Robinson, who's coming off a bad year himself, I think you get Chark and Robinson combined for about 20 to 25 million dollars. So, uh, yeah, I think there's absolutely a chance. Let's go to Casey the Sledge Storyteller. Hey, Mitch, wanted to get behind those who got behind Basaccia but felt uneasy on how he might have found a solution for the defense issues. Any insight on how he had addressed the team issues? Unfortunately, no. I don't have too much to know, but from what I've seen, from what I've heard, Basachi just showed him that he cared. The reason why they called him Papa Basachi is because they looked at him as a father figure. That locker room got really close after everything that they went through, and for that, I think when you have somebody who you look at as a father figure and he tells you something, you listen to him. Why? You respect him. Go to Vincenzo Peoples. Can the Raiders go out and sign Christian Kirk? Yeah, of course they can. Christian Kirk is another very solid receiver who I think would actually fit pretty well in the system. A little bit undersized. I liked him when he first came out of Texas Tech. He's not a burner, but he is a really good route runner. He's got solid hands, can be a solid guy in the red zone. I would say he reminds me of a lesser version of Michael Crabtree. Let's go to William Merchant. Which defensive tackles do we bring back? Uh, and here's the issue. I think if you were to ask me which defensive tackle is the most likely to come back, I might throw out the name Jonathan Hankins because he's the bigger guy. Could maybe fit in a 3-4. Solomon Thomas is an interesting name, though. If I was Sully, I would try to go with another 4-3 scheme. I don't know how I would like a 3-4. But uh, Gerald McCoy, I don't see him coming back. I don't really know Darius Filon. I don't think he ends up coming back. you got to go out and get some defensive tackles this offseason. What up, Luis? Get Moses for right tackle. Mo Morgan Moses is the top right tackle in free agency. He's the top guy that I would want the Raiders to go out and get. 
Depends how much you're going to have to pay him. I would say probably around $10, $11 million a year.